Do you remember back in November when a ticket was raised in Fedora to take the Fedora KD spin and raise it to the same edition status as the main version of Fedora, the GNOME version, Fedora Workstation? Now, given the state of KDE just as a general desktop project, as in really good today, and given the state of the maintainership of the Fedora KDE spin, which is basically treating it like an addition anyway, treating it at the same level as Fedora Workstation and changes in Fedora KDE are blocking on releases anyway because KDE is such an important desktop, people didn't really see a reason for this not to happen. Maybe it wouldn't have happened five or ten years ago, but with the state of everything today, this passed unanimously 9-0. Now, I said this at the time, and I'll say it again, Fedora Workstation, the GNOME edition of Fedora, isn't going away. If that's what you prefer to use, it's always going to be an option. Okay, maybe not always, but it's going to be an option for the foreseeable future. All this is doing is taking Fedora KDE and giving it the respect it deserves. Not treating KDE like a second-class citizen, treating it at the same level as the GNOME version. Now, even though this has already been approved, what didn't exist at the time was a change proposal. And considering that it's already been approved, this is basically just a formality. This is one of the things I really like about Fedora. You don't have changes being made on IRC or a Matrix channel or in some like random GitLab somewhere. If some major change is made, there will be a change proposal that logs that change. Even if it doesn't need to happen, even if everybody agrees it should happen, there is still going to be a log of those changes. This is something Arch Linux has also started doing, and I really wish other distros would do the same. Now, as always, if you want to go see some absolutely delusional comments, Phronix, great, I like Phronix, but um, go click the comments button down here and... <laughs> You'll see people arguing about things that have nothing to do with the change. It's like Red Hat bad, Red Hat owned by IBM, IBM evil, therefore Fedora evil level of comments. Just things that don't matter at all. And I know some people take things a little bit too seriously, get offended by comments on a forum, but just take yourself out of it. Just enjoy it for the disaster that it is and you have a bit of fun. So let's put that to the side and go to the change proposal. Promote KD Plasma desktop variant to addition. At this stage, this will be happening alongside the Fedora 42 release. Assuming nothing goes wrong, I don't see any way that doesn't happen. Again, this has already been approved. So it's a matter of all of the things surrounding getting this done to make it actually happen. When it comes to the Fedora KD spin itself, there's not really much that has to change with that. As approved by the Fedora Council, this promotes the Fedora KD Plasma Desktop variant to full edition status. This links over to the issue that I mentioned earlier where it got 9 to 0 voting, so again, this is just a formality. As the variant is already released blocking, this is mainly a change for adjusting how the KD desktop variant is presented and promoted. So if there is some major breaking change in KDE, which for whatever reason makes it so you can't build it, or I don't know, accessibility doesn't work anymore, things like that, that is something that will actually put a halt to a Fedora release. So even though it was only a spin, like the budgie spin, or like the i3 spin, it was being effectively treated like an addition anyway, just not given the name. We have identified the following focus areas to market the KDE Plasma Desktop Edition. 1. Multimedia Enthusiasts. AV and gaming particularly see VRR on Wayland or DRM leasing. This is an area where 6 to 12 months ago, KDE was just miles and miles ahead with GNOME having absolutely no hope in sight to resolving either of these issues. This one was at least being worked on, but 
it'd been open for like three or four years. Nobody really knew when it was going to happen. There were different reworks that had to be done to make it happen. But with the release of GNOME 46, variable refresh rate on Wayland is now behind an experimental option. So you can go and enable it. And when it comes to DRM leasing, this is the protocol required to use a VR headset under Wayland. And there was a whole mess there. Gnome was involved in originally signing off on the protocol, and then some developers said, well, we don't actually like DRM leasing, we want to do it in this way, and they realized that way was stupid, and they tried to do it with portals, and then Valve developers told them they're stupid, and they're never going to support that, so they were like, well we don't care about you, then they realized, wait, if we're going to support VR, we kind of need to have the Valve people on board. And then eventually they agreed, oh yeah, we did say we we're going to do DRM leasing, and now that's a thing. And as of GNOME 47, that is enabled, and you should be able to use a VR headset on GNOME now. With that being said, however, both variable refresh rate and DRM leasing are fairly new implementations, whereas on KDE, I believe it's had both of them for, I would say at least, what, three years on VRR and then, yeah, three years on DRM leasing as well. So it's had a lot more time to iron out issues and I would expect the KD implementation to be a lot more pressure tested, especially with KDE being the recommended solution for doing VR on Wayland by Valve themselves. In their documentation, the solution to GNOME not working was installed KDE. Secondly, content creators. Me. What is this? What is this linked to? KDE for creators. For artists using KDE applications. Ah, so it's just like a marketing piece for various KDE things like Critter, Caden Live, Glaxnamate. I have never heard of this one. It looks like a vector program. I don't know why you wouldn't suggest Inkscape there. I guess Inkscape is not an older version. And some various other things here. Aligning with KDE slash QT software in the space such as Caden Live, Krita, and of course OBS Studio. We love OBS. OBS is... Yes, you can use other things to record, but like OBS is just... It's just better than everything. And you know what I'm surprised about? That there's never been a really good GTK-based video editor. There have definitely been video editors made with GTK, but nothing is as good as Caden Live. Now granted, Caden Live isn't a very high bar, and you'd be very surprised how many people in the Linux space actually use DaVinci Resolve. I'm one of the few people that actually use Caden Live, but a lot of people just use DaVinci. Accessibility, aligning with upstream work to make the Linux desktop friendly to folks of various impairments such as color blindness, limited dexterity, and limited motor control. Now, I'm not super sure on a lot of the accessibility stuff because, firstly, I just don't need it. Secondly, it's just not something really talked about that often. Most of my knowledge is about blindness and mobility and when it comes to mobility so you'd want things like key automation and things like that and when it comes to Wayland that's just something that isn't really that much of a thing when it comes to blindness however I would say KDE does have the upper hand there just because of the power it has with theming Gnome, you're pretty much stuck on whatever themes Gnome wants to give you. The whole, like, theming Gnome nowadays is getting harder and harder, and I would not be surprised if by the time we get to uh, GTK 5, theming is just not really a thing anymore, or is a lot more limited to maybe just a color API. But KDE, you can do whatever you want. So if you don't like whatever high contrast theme is available because you actually want your system to look good, even though you have fairly limited eyesight, KD is going to have something that is just a better option there. As for a bunch of other kinds of accessibility, honestly, I have no idea the state of Linux in general there. But my general understanding is for a lot of people out there, basically to use their system, X11 is pretty much the only option they have. Wayland right now is just not really viable. And I hope at some point that does become a thing where people can actually go and use their system properly again, but accessibility has always been one of these areas where 
there's just not really been that much excitement to work on the problem. There have been people that have been very dedicated to it, but not really much in the way of resources to get that work done. And fourth, personalization. Along with KDE Plasma features for customizing the desktop experience. And yes, you can install a lot of plugins in GNOME. I am well aware there is a lot of personalization you can do. I did a stream installing way too many GNOME extensions. And yes, you can still theme applications using Libid Waiter, but it's much harder than it used to be. KDE doesn't have this idea of stop theming my apps. Theming on KDE is something well within the range of support. Now, the experience theming is not pleasant because there's like seven different toolkits within the one toolkit they use to do the theming, but it's something they actively like having there. But there is one kind of personalization that KDE did limit, especially with KDE 6. There were a lot of options in KDE 5 which just didn't need to exist. Not because, you know, user choice is bad or anything like that, but because they actively did not need to exist. It was, you could make the correct option or you could make the wrong option. So why is that even a choice? Why aren't you just automatically detecting the correct thing to do in that system? There should never be an occasion where a user trying to customize something can make the wrong choice. This makes KDE stand out among the major Linux distributions by promoting the KDE Plasma desktop as a flagship experience and signals a strong commitment to the KDE community by rewarding the current success of the Fedora KDE community and supporting its continued growth. Now look, when we're talking about a Fedora change proposal, they're often just glazing Fedora, right? <laughs> like that's, that's sort of their main purpose. Yes, it's supposed to indicate changes they want to make happen. Yeah, 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 that's all good. But there's always going to be a part of it where it's like, yeah, Fedora, we're great. We do really good things. Fedora, we're the best distribution. In the early days of Linux before GNOME was around, KD had a short stint of being the big Linux desktop. The first big desktop was CDE. Now, there have always been window managers and small desktops and all that sort of stuff, but it mainly went CDE, KDE, and then GNOME came out a year later because KDE had a whole licensing issue with QT, and at some point it could have gone proprietary, and no one really knew it was going to go on, and there's a big history there. I've done a video on it in the past before. Things are pretty much just resolved now, and it's never going to become a problem, but a lot of people were very concerned then. GNOME came along, and initially... GNOME was the smaller thing, but it very quickly got adopted by things like Red Hat Linux, and then RHEL when that came out, and then Fedora, and there was a period where distros like RHEL actually offered both GNOME and KDE, and it only stopped offering KDE relatively recently a couple of versions back, but for a long time they were both the flagship experience. Nowadays there are still some notable distros that have KDE in that role. Things like Manjaro, as much as I don't like Manjaro, Manjaro is still a very notable distro. OpenSUSE, which doesn't really have a default option. It kind of just treats a lot of things as a flagship, and when you look at things like their immutable experiences, both their GNOME and KDE offering are basically treated as the flagship. But, especially nowadays, Fedora is considerably bigger than both Manjaro and OpenSUSE, and probably together, right? Now, if you want to argue about OpenSUSE, well, you can talk about their recent election where they had trouble finding people to run. Um, Fedora doesn't have that problem, so I think that's very telling about the number of people involved in the project. Now, as a distro offering, as a spin offering, a flavor offering, whatever term you want to use for it, Fedora KDE isn't really changing that much. Basically just a few branding changes, because it was already being run at the quality of an edition anyway, it's just a matter of how they present it. And that's the thing that could potentially delay things, because if we go to the Fedora website right now, at this stage, 
this is how it is presented. So this download button here is going to take you to get Workstation or get Server, IoT, CoreOS, or Cloud. So if they put it maybe like right here, or maybe change how they're presenting things, but they also need to go and generate the marketing material for this, giving it a name. Are they going to call it Fedora Workstation KDE? Are they going to call this Fedora Workstation GNOME? Are they going to give it a whole new name entirely? Are they going to generate these pages where it actually has a specific page for Workstation with a bunch of material on it explaining what that distro is about, all that sort of stuff? This site layout stuff and this marketing stuff, this is what's really going to slow things down and hopefully it doesn't take too long. But look, whilst there is a lot of developers in the FOSS world, marketing people and design people are in high demand. So I have no doubt that it can be done. It's just a matter of whether it's going to be done in a good enough way for the Fedora project to actually represent itself. Now, this is what I hope comes from all of this. A revival for KDE. Not that KDE is doing badly or KDE is being dead, but what I mean is bringing KDE back into the limelight because it's already the Steam Deck desktop. It's already a very popular option just for distros where people just choose whatever they want to choose. And even when it's just a spin option, it's always the second most popular spin, but if I'm being honest, Gnome being the big dog for a very, very long time now has led many developers to get, how do we say this nicely, complacent in a less nice way, getting cocky that Gnome is the big desktop environment. Gnome is Linux. Gnome is the face of the Linux desktop, so Gnome runs the show. And if you've seen my Wayland Protocol discussion videos, you would know there are a lot of Gnome people that have very, very big egos that seem to think that if Gnome doesn't want something, it shouldn't happen on the Linux desktop. Treating Gnome and KDE as equal parties, because frankly, that's what they are, should hopefully bring some big egos in check. I don't need to name drop people because you know exactly who I'm talking about and they know exactly who they're talking about. So, let's see how this goes. Maybe Rel brings it back. That would be very funny. That would be so funny. With Rel dropping it like two versions back, if they say, oh yeah, well, um... KDE is now our flagship option. And then let's say Ubuntu. They have Ubuntu KDE as a secondary flagship option. If that happens, if that happened and KDE became a second face of Linux, that would be very funny. That would be really, really funny. But honestly, for a lot of new people, I think it would be a massive boon as well. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts down below. I need to be clear, I don't hate GNOME. I like GNOME as a desktop project. I don't like some of the choices they make, but as a project, I want it to do well. And I feel like just people have sat around kind of just being like, GNOME, we're the big dogs for too long now. And things need to shake up a little bit to, uh, you know, bring things back in order. But let me know. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you like the video, Go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero page, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And people are going to call me a KDE shill now. I love it. At some point, I have to make a video about KDE being bad again because I've got too many people calling me a shill.